Thank you for the introduction and the invitation as well. Um, I'm going to show a few projects here that are quite different in scale from the, from the ones that we have seen earlier. Um, uh, just a few words uh, in connection with the introduction. Um, our office began as a side project. Um, when I graduated uh, from the university, it was in 2008, uh, at the beginning of the financial crisis, and uh, there were no, not too many projects for young architects. Um, and I was in a lucky situation that I could uh, be part of this Norwegian office, uh, led by Canadian Todd Saunders. And uh, it took all my time and efforts in architecture, but in, beside that, I was, I was always interested in uh, local projects and the local architecture in Hungary. So I'm, I founded this office, but for three years, we only had uh, one project. <laughs> So that was a slow start and uh, it always felt like uh, more like a hobby or uh, like a Saturday afternoon activity. Um, our projects are quite small scale and uh, spread around the, the country. Um, this is the very first project that was mentioned in the introduction, Hideg House in Köseg, which uh, um, got quite a lot of um, attention in international newspapers, also published in Korea, I think in two magazines. Uh, this was our first project and uh, it felt uh, quite strange for me to, to start with something like this. Uh, it was a very, very um, lucky situation that I got into this, that without any uh, references in Hungary I could build a house and uh, I need to say thank you for Attila Hideg, who is the, the owner of the house and who built this house uh, with his own hands with his wife. And um, we start our uh, three projects with another project uh, that is built by him uh, in the same town, uh, Köseg in Hungary. Um, the three different projects that I will show are a little bit different um, in uh, the typologies, but they all have some um, connection with um, regeneration or revitalization. Uh, so first of all, uh, the Nitsky apartment uh, is uh, more like a classical way of um, reusing origin, um, uh, rehabilitating uh, an old building. Uh, the historical uh, town of Köseg is quite close to Sopron that uh, we have already seen in the Levanta um, uh, slides. Uh, it's quite similar in that term as well that um, uh, the center of the town has a fortress and uh, there is this moat or this water ditch around it with an inner wall and an outer wall of the, of the castle, uh, or we can say fortress. And our project takes place in this house here. Uh, something that is unique about this uh, town is that um, the center is kept in very good condition uh, for, and all the houses there are about four and five hundred year old at least. So um, the house in the center of the image with the white walls is um, is a project that we worked on, but it's more like an interior project. Uh, about the exterior, we had nothing to do because it's uh, listed in the national monuments, um, among the national, national monuments, so it was quite limited. But um, the project uh, started inside, and um, the, the image is taken from the inner wall of the castle, and uh, here you see a bit of a piece of a wall. That was the old uh, place where the outer wall uh, went. Uh, this image uh, is taken in the early 80s when I was born. This is the con condition of the house. Um, we see here this part of the wall is demolished already. Um, in these years, uh, the house was almost uh, destroyed, but uh, luckily or not, in the 80s, uh, someone um, took care of it and uh, um, with the typical style of the 80s, they renovated the interiors. The story of the apartment starts more than 400 years ago when the Turkish army attacked the, the castle. That's the first time this plot of land was mentioned somewhere. And after about 100 years later, we know that uh, the main part of the building was built and then this new part uh, uh, built uh, about 300 years ago. Uh, so this part in the back um, was only one uh, quarter of the whole building because uh, in those days um, 
after the Second World War, these, typic, these houses were typically divided into smaller apartments. There was no owner for the whole thing, and then the parts were just the condition of the parts was going lower and lower. So this was the the condition when we first saw the the project. Uh, the special arrangement is quite. Um, interesting in that terms that it has two floors and uh, on the top uh, on the ground floor this whole area is open to the outside so um, through this door we can enter a little garden and uh, uh, this area features some relaxation uh, space a uh, little sauna and a wine cellar uh, these were the functions that we filled those empty spaces with uh, after we got the commission uh, and uh, as we read in these original um, uh, information of the, the apartment, we realized that this back part of the house, these three rooms that are upstairs, uh, were originally built as a guest house. Um, the family Nitsky built this part to, to, re to let it to traveling merchants and artists. So the, the idea was to create a rental flat or almost like a little hotel room uh, in this space. Uh, when we arrive up in, uh, along the stairs, uh, we already find ourselves in a little kitchen and dining room. Uh, there is a, a bedroom combined with a living room and uh, a small bathroom up there. Uh, this is a view uh, from the garden into the, the space. This is what you see when you arrive. Uh, these walls um, uh, tell the story of the building, basically. All the new elements that we added, we tried to be, uh, keep it secondary, and uh, um, but we tried to use simple techniques, and you need to know that the, the budget of this uh, is, uh, project is very regular, or let's say ordinary. Um, as we step closer, this is the, the deepest part of the, the cellar, the oldest room, and this is uh, the wall on the left is, shows the original building, and then something, everything on the right is just, uh, just 300 years old. Um, a view towards uh, the little sauna. We were um, trying, to, trying not to close this area because most of them. Most of the architects would maybe think that if you have 80 square meters, you wouldn't uh, give away 40 square meters for outdoor space in such a good location. But our intention was to, to maintain this original um, uh, climate, and we tried to find four seasonal activities that could fill this. So in connection with the, with the rental apartment above, this part below uh, is um, uh, not indoor space, but kind of semi-indoor and outdoor. Uh, when you step in uh, through the door into the, um, into the, um, the staircase, uh, you see that light is coming from above also in the day and also in the night. This is kind of inviting uh, uh, for, for the guests. Um, and if you look at the details here, you see again that uh, we were not hiding the imperfections of the original uh, vaulted ceilings of the walls and uh, the stone walls, but we tried to reveal or to show what was um, valuable. Um, uh, this is um, the view, the main view from the staircase towards um, the dining room and the kitchenette. And here you see these um, uh, little uh, revealed wall surfaces where you can probably see that the wall changes as we go higher. This was because the building was damaged several times. There was a, uh, a big fire in this area and also in the 80s when it was rebuilt they placed a new uh, f uh, ceiling or slab on, on top of this structure. So these uh, parts that are highlighted uh, show the story of the building in a, in a certain way. We used uh, oil large, uh, large floors and the same um, material that we used on the floor um, returns in details of the furniture, like in the handles and uh, the ventilation for the kitchen and all the different elements. This is the only decoration that we used. Uh, all the other new elements, we tried to keep them as simple as possible. Most of the time they were white and uh, the surface also creates a contrast between old and new. So what is new is usually shiny or soft and the older parts were more rough. This is the, um, the view from the, um, from the main uh, area into the bedroom. Uh, it's interesting to see that um, the apartment has windows in three different directions and it faces directly the fortress. So that was one of the main um, uh, ideas that we wanted to keep, the 
arrangement of the spaces and the long axis in the middle that can connects the two windows on the opposite ends and uh, the, the openings for the rooms are in the same line. Uh, it's, in, it's interesting, I don't know if you realize, but there are no interior doors in this project. Um, only in the toilet part we have a, a glass wall. Uh, here again, the same type of details we used um, with the, the oil uh, large wood in, in the new furniture and uh, some photos of the bathroom where we experimented a little bit a combination of glass and concrete on the surfaces of the sink and the vanity unit. Uh, here again some small details. Uh, again a few words about Attila Hidek who built the house. He spent, um, he, he's a surveyor originally but he stopped working in that field and he's only working in a, 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 a self-built projects lately. He spent one and a half year uh, in, on this project. Uh, the reason why it lasted so long is that um, all the detailed work for these walls and the restoration took quite a long time. Okay, so the next house uh, is quite different, but uh, in some sort of ways we can find some uh, parallel ideas. This is um, an interesting story about Hungarian single-family houses that in the, um, after the 1960, from the nine from 1960, um, there were almost 800,000 uh, single-family houses built in similar style like this. We could extend this photo collage all the way to <laughs> the, the other side of the city. Um, there is a small collection of them, but they are usually very similar to each other. And the, the interesting thing is that they appear everywhere uh, in the country and you don't really find uh, the, the logic behind I, at least I don't find the logic why this happens, but um, this project um, that I'm going to talk about is um, our own uh, single family house, which is located in Kesthely, which has the second largest uh, palace of Hungary after a fair <laughs> palace that we have seen earlier in uh, Joel Winter's uh, uh, slides. Um, and then the town itself it has uh, 20,000 inhabitants and it has a really, really rich. Um, architectural heritage, not only the palace itself, but also the, 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 the old city center with a 600-year-old church and a lot of nice houses. Uh, also, uh, in the last 200 or 150 years, there were a lot of nice single-family houses built in classic, classical styles or romantic styles, uh, all sorts of different houses that were built in a high level with a type of unexpected beauty. You don't really find the logic behind why it looks like that, but for some reason we all think that they are nice for some reason. And believe or not, I don't know if anyone guessed what's on the left, but <laughs> there is another little Kadar cube. Um, in the neighborhood. So these types of houses uh, pop up even in those, these types of um, towns where the, the, the cultural and built heritage is very high level. So in the same town, a little bit further away from the center, uh, my wife and I, who is also an architect, we bought this um, house about six years ago, maybe more, eight years ago, and uh, we decided to figure out what we can do with this, because even though there are 800,000 of these houses, maybe every tenth Hungarian lives in such a building, uh, there are not really good examples in the renovation or in the rethinking and re um, reimagination of these. So our main principles were, um, we wanted a larger terrace than what was existing, uh, we wanted the covered uh, um, staircase and some kind of more inviting, uh, welcoming element. And we wanted to replace the roof with a, a second floor that is not much larger, but much easier or more comfortable to use. So all these arrows in the three diagrams uh, resulted in this little rotation on the, <coughs> um, in the sketch below. Uh, and um, if, I do, if I show you the floor plans of the house, uh, the black part shows the old and typical arrangement of these rooms, uh, but already with the, the new addition. So uh, we extended it a little bit and uh, created this rotation around this point to create uh, a wall that can hide away water drainage and also creating this roof that will uh, widen our terrace and create the protected and more welcoming stair. 
Uh, on the second floor, we have two uh, rooms. One is a guest room for uh, visitors, and uh, this is uh, our home office where I used to uh, work for years for the Norwegian firm. Uh, in the next uh, photo, I show you that the facade changed quite a lot, but you will notice that we, as we were like 29 year, years old and we had no money to, to, to change it completely and we tried to keep it as a, at the logical minimum where we, what we can, we, what, what we could keep, we really kept. So the, the, the location of the window is the same and uh, we didn't destroy it completely. But if you look at uh, the end result, it's uh, something quite different. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but um, the, the thing I mentioned about those uh, nice classical buildings, the unexpected Mess and uh, the asymmetry and uh, some sort of playful um, um, factor is also shown in this project. Um, hard to hard to tell. I see this every day, and uh, it's for me it's uh, regular. But I still see that people are riding the bikes along our street are looking at it, and they don't really get what happens here. Um, here you see a little bit more the result of that little um, uh, rotation. Uh, these angles were quite sharp and an interesting story is that uh, when we built this house I had a project in uh, Istanbul and I had to travel there six times in half a year, exactly in those days when I, re I was really <laughs> needed on the building side. So my wife went here every morning before she, she started work and dealt with um, the builders while I was away. And uh, when uh, all the horizontal form work was finished, uh, we had to define this point somehow behind the installation and no one really believed her where it has to be. Uh, so they waited for me until I arrived <laughs> to, to tell them that this, that's the same point. So the, the carpenter gave me a, an X and a piece of uh, nail and told me to, <laughs> to put it where it has to be and then I placed it to the same location as she suggested. And, so you see that all the, uh, the, the edges are sharp enough. Uh, that's a view from the back side. I don't know, do I have more time or uh, five minutes? Okay. Um, so this is the, the view from the back side and um, maybe some interior shots. We tried to reuse the same angular ID on the interior as we had some different ceiling heights because of the attachment. We created an interesting um, height transition with um, stretch ceilings in our um, 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 dining room. A few details of the staircase. We used um, beech wood and um, grey uh, tiles uh, in the main rooms. And just for a reminder, the image on the right is taken uh, from the day when we when we bought the original uh, apartment or house. Okay, so the last project I'm going to show you is a little bit less or even less urban than the others. Um, this house um, is located about 15 kilometers from our home uh, on the shore of Lake Balaton. And uh, nowadays this village is becoming a suburbia of my hometown. And all these villages around are growing so fast that they are touching each other and it's all becoming a one large area of built environment. The, the reason for that is that people didn't find the right answers how to reuse the old buildings in the centers of the, the towns. And uh, it's more cheap and more easy to find an empty piece of land somewhere here and build something. Uh, uh, and that as a result, it's maybe it's not cheaper, but much easier and easier to, uh, to get a uh, good quality. So this is a, a big failure of our uh, society that we build uh, more and more and all our um, towns and villages are getting larger while the population is uh, decreasing. Uh, the project that I'm going to show you is uh, somewhere here. Uh, the, the center of the, the village is here near the Lake Balaton and they have vineyards uh, up um, near the forests. And this green area here is almost completely empty when we got uh, asked to design this house. and. Um, we had um, a lot of references in our mind. That was the nice, tra oops, a nice uh, traditional, typical traditional buildings of the north shore of Lake Balaton. Uh, you find uh, some sort of beauty and in the simplicity of these buildings. Uh, they uh, were usually white painted, 
uh, low ceilings, low roofs, pitch roofs with simple material gables. And um, we were trying to find new ways or reinvent this type of uh, uh, houses, not to build something that is quite popular lately among the average um, house projects. Uh, uh, this is um, the result or an image of the result. You need to know that uh, this house had been built for a, for a couple uh, of two and um, they were very open for new things, especially not only in architecture and aesthetics but also in technology. So all uh, the mechanical systems and heating systems of the buildings are uh, in the 21st century. Um, aspects, uh, which um, uh, makes a difference, but uh, I believe it's possible to find the link between uh, um, the old houses that I showed earlier. Also, back to the project before, there is the, something like uh, an unexpected random uh, layout of the windows there as well. So if we look at um, the side plan, the only thing that I want to mention is that we didn't place the building parallel with the street, but we placed it parallel with the contour lines and so that it can face the best view. And we could create a narrow building with the least uh, amount of uh, digging and filling necessary. A few words about the floor plans. They have a camper van, so that's why maybe the reason for the triangle is that the regular car is like this and the camper is almost two times larger. So we kept the simple arrangement of spaces, which uh, mo our idea was to, f to focus most or face most of the rooms towards the best views, create a corridor in the back and mm, somehow a place where you know some rooms are connected. and. Um, the couple uh, that uh, asked us to design this house, uh, they were really uh, clear about what they wanted inside. We just, um, in terms of sizes, but we could surprise them with some um, uh, solutions. So here you see a little bit more how this building fits the environment. Uh, maybe I just try this way. And. Uh, they face Lake Balaton and there is a little chapel there that is quite nice to, to look at. Um, here you see another image from the street side with the triangular part, maybe a little bit more distortion than what you would experience in reality. Uh, our main idea was to keep some of the, the traditional things and on the other hand uh, simplify things and uh, uh, calm it down so that uh, it doesn't compete with the environment, it doesn't compete with the landscape. It's just a little sign there and if you look at it from a distance or if you look at it from close, you don't really take too much attention. Uh, some photos of the interior of the space. Um, the same floor, flooring had been used all over the, the building in, uh, in most of the rooms and uh, that's something that connects the space and um, uh, the owners have some valuable or at least interesting artwork uh, that was important for them to showcase, so all the other elements are quite uh, secondary. A uh, few images of the bathroom that is maybe a little bit more puristic than I would build for myself, but uh, I found it practical so that you can buy any color of bathrobe or <laughs> towels that will fit the, the bathroom best way. And, uh, Almost the last image here. Uh, this uh, photo had been taken in uh, let's say three years ago when the house was new, and uh, we had this chance to build it here. And uh, all the other plots beside that are quite large were empty. And I had this uh, romantic feeling that we could get a chance to show something, and maybe the people who people who will uh, buy the neighboring plots that were not sold yet at that moment, they could maybe this could work as a magnet for people with good taste and they might uh, think or figure out what was the meaning behind this building and this is something that is linked to the past and shows a direction into the future and then guess what happened uh, two or three weeks ago I took another image from almost the same location and uh, well 
uh, we have, a, I just call it a Mediterranean sandwich because we have, you know, two Mediterranean neighbors and then uh, almost like a Carter cube uh, 50 years later than it was <laughs> invented and uh, all the other, some new buildings that look ex exactly like traditional houses but are decorated with <laughs> elements of technology. So, uh, just like a last word, uh, I'm still not understanding this, and I, I read a book about Béla Bartók, a uh, famous Hungarian uh, composer and pianist, who collected the folk songs of the uh, Hungarian nation for many years, and he also collected the Romanian and Slovakian uh, songs, and when he collected the songs from uh, other countries, he uh, learned the language, because he told that uh, it was very important for him to understand not only the music, but uh, the vocabulary and the meaning of the, of the um, songs. And uh, this way of understanding and the, the efforts for understanding just made me think that maybe we, Hungarian architects, would need to learn Hungarian <laughs> again, because we need to understand this, why this is happening. Thank you for your attention.